what are your thoughts on this wild final four? I can almost guarantee you that not a single person in this universe predict predicted this particular final four. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I saw it on ESPN this morning. I think they said something like 20 million brackets were filled out and 35 people got this final four right. So mm -hmm. it's just incredible. No blue bloods there. No Duke, Villanova, Kentucky, Kansas, you know, Carolina, all the huge teams. And it just shows you, um, you know, the parity that we have in the game right now. Um, with the one and dones and the transfer portal and all that stuff. It just seems like everyone's catching up to the blue bloods. Um, mm -hmm. When I was at Duke, I mean, I was much, much better my senior year than my freshman year. So I'm always amazed at how quickly these young players, whether they only stay at school for one year, their freshman year, or they transfer in the portal and they're, they're only playing for that coach in that school for one year, how quickly they pick it up, how quickly they put it to, together. And, you know, it seems like the teams that can play a high level of defense um, are doing very well. San Diego State's, uh, you know, an example of that. But, um, I wish UConn and Miami weren't playing against each other in the semifinal game because those are my two favorite teams right now, but they're going to knock each other out. I'm pulling for UConn because of Danny Hurley. I played with Bobby Hurley and Danny Hurley, you know, used to visit us a little when I was in college. And then I'm pulling for Miami University because they're in the ACC and, and I like the way they play. Indeed. Now, March Madness has always had love for the madness and unpredictability. But again, man, we, we haven't ever seen anything like this. Do you believe that this is actually good for the sport in the long run? Or is it bad that we don't have that sort of blue blood legacy in, in, in these uh, represented in the Final Four? I think it's good for the game in the long run. Um, there's nothing wrong with parity. There's nothing wrong with other teams enjoying some success and other fan bases uh, getting a taste and a feel of what the Final Four is like. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was playing, we made the Final Four every year. So there was a lot mm -hmm. of teams and players and fan bases that weren't getting a chance to experience that. So I see nothing wrong with it. I'm going to the Final Four again this year to enjoy the environment and to work. Um, and it's a little different when they're when Duke is not there for me, um, but it's still a lot of fun to work it and to be at Bracket Town. And Bracket Town is just a great time. If if none of you have ever been there, you got to go. You know, you you gave us a good humble flex. You didn't miss the Final Four when you were playing, <laughs> but a team like Houston, number one seed, they're playing in their backyard and they don't even make the Final Four. You know, what do you believe is going through the mind of a school like that? You know, I feel bad for Houston. I had them making the Final Four because I love the way they play defense. They um, run, ran into a buzzsaw, and they struggled a little offensively, the game that they lost. So I feel bad for them because it would be great for them to, you know, playing in the Final Four in their home city. I remember watching you play, bro, and it was a crazy feeling. But once the parade is done and all the other things are done, you guys are going back to school, what is it like to be royalty on campus? I mean, you had to be bigger than the dean at that particular point. What is it like winning the national title and then going back to campus? Well, it's not a bad feeling, Tony, I'll tell you that. Um... Uh, the thing that I enjoyed the most was seeing fellow students and asking them, you know, what was it like? Because I wasn't even there. Because if you win the if you win the championship on Monday night, you're not on campus. You know, I'm not. I'm not on Duke campus. So we wouldn't get home till Tuesday afternoon, and there would be like a big party a big get together in Cameron you know after we won and that was huge and fun and lots of fans but then when you're walking around campus later that day everyone would run up to us and say Christian you should have been here you know Monday night the night that you guys won it was 
it was just off the charts and we're burning down benches and partying all <laughs> night long. So I always felt like I missed out on something because I wasn't on campus on Monday night. But when you're there doing it and winning the game, it's a lot of fun. But you, you also wish you could be there and be kind of like a regular student once in a while and celebrate with everybody. After that first win, though, is it weird for you? Like, how do you function in class? Are you a fish in a fishbowl and everybody's like the teacher's starstruck asking you for autographs? Like, what is it like being on campus and being arguably the greatest college basketball player to ever play the game? No, it's not a fishbowl because what happens is that people get used to your presence. They get used to the fact that that you're there at Duke with them. You're a fellow student. They see you every day. So I would say the first week of school might be, you know, in a fishbowl because everyone's like, I'm here at Duke and and you're here and I and I love you and I love the basketball team. But eventually everyone gets used to it and and they see you every day and they're still They'll still, they're still cheering for you. They're still patting you on the back, but it's not like, you know, you're this big thing that they've never seen before because they see you every day. So they get used to you a little bit. So I want to ask you about your alma mater. You guys have a brand new coach. Do you believe that the team exceeded expectations? And what are your expectations for your alma mater next season? Um... I think John Shire is doing a really good job. I mean, it would be tough to to take that coaching job after Coach K for 40 years. There's there's high expectations by everyone in Cameron Indoor Stadium, by every team that you're ever playing. So I think John's doing a great job. Now, the truth of the matter is, is they didn't really look like Duke in December. When, when John Shire only had, you know, two or three months under his belt working with the new team. But I'm proud to say, and I'm really happy that John got it done because by the end of February and, you know, early March, the ACC tournament, this year's Duke team looked like a Duke team, even though they were Jeremy Roach with like th four freshmen around him. They still played defense like a Duke team. They ran offense like a Duke team. So that was really, really good to see. Now, if we can get some of these really good freshmen to stay to stay in school and not go to the league, I think we'll see the Duke teams in the future look even more like a Duke team. Um, remember, when I was a freshman, I wasn't very good. But by my senior year, you can see that, you know, that I'm playing Duke basketball. Everyone that's an upperclassman is playing Duke basketball. So it's just a different time. It's a different game. The kids got to pick it up so much faster. Um, you know, it takes a year and a half just to get Duke's defensive scheme down. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't good at, my, good at it my freshman year, but you get a few more years under your belt and you start playing at a very, very high level. Hey, sports fans, if you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.